Good evening, and welcome to the 15,433rd performance of the New York Philharmonic. We have a very special program for you tonight, featuring two pieces by Carl August Nielsen, his flute concerto and his violin concerto, and Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky's Second Symphony. What is unusual about tonight's program is that the three works performed span less than half a century, but exhibit the styles of three musical periods, the classical, the romantic, and the modern. Although the classical period is generally dated from 1750 to 1820, before the time of either Tchaikovsky or Nielsen, it greatly influenced the work of both composers. Across all artistic forms, from architecture to literature to visual arts to music, classicism sought a return to the ideals of antiquity, especially those of ancient Greece. Closely associated with the absolutist regimes of both eras, classicalism emphasized order, emotional restraint, formality, and hierarchy. However, it also favored simplicity, clarity, variety, balance, and contrast. In music, this tendency manifested itself in a preference for homophonic texture. While the term homophony may be unfamiliar, the concept surely is not. A single, more prominent musical line in the foreground, the melody, with one or more less prominent musical lines in the background, the harmonies. Thematically, classical music is what is known as absolute or abstract. In other words, it is non-representational, and does not seek to convey a narrative beyond the music itself. Nielsen and Tchaikovsky were both born in the Romantic period, which spanned 1815 to 1910. The Romantic movement was a backlash against the mechanization of the Industrial Revolution and the scientific rationalization of the Enlightenment. Romantic composers took great liberties with structure and form, rejecting the logical and intellectualization of musical organization and progression prevalent in the classical period. Instead, their aim was personal expression of emotion. Romantic music was characterized by its dramatic and lyrical qualities, technical virtuosity, a sense of ambiguity, heightened, passionate emotions, and fantastical, imaginative, and adventurous elements. Romantic music, in contrast to classical music, was usually program music, representational music that sought to create a narrative about the outside world. Both Tchaikovsky and Nielsen died during the next musical era, the modern period, dating from 1890 to 1930. Modernism is a general term for a period of great change, development, and exploration in musical composition, resulting in a wide variety of divergent styles. Modernism included a neoclassicist movement, which flourished in the interwar period. A reaction against the emotionalism of the Romantic, it sought a return to the aesthetics of the classical period, discussed before. Although Nielsen is now internationally renowned as the greatest Danish composer of all time, it took time for his work to be appreciated, even in his native Denmark, so much so that his work is still growing in popularity today. Nielsen's recognition in Scandinavia occurred in his lifetime, and his acclaim became so great that for a time he was even the face on Denmark's 100 kroner banknote. However, his breakthrough on the international stage did not come until after World War II, with Leonard Bernstein's 1962 recording of Nielsen's Sixth Fifth Symphony with the New York Philharmonic for CBS. Although best known for his six symphonies, Nielsen also composed two operas, three concertos, and myriad orchestral, choral, and keyboard works, as well as incidental music. The score is for primarily non-musical forms. Nielsen's early work was neoclassical with romantic influence, greatly inspired by Brahms and Edvard Grieg's Romanticism and Mozart's Classicism, although he was disdainful of the work of the other Romantic composers. Nielsen closely studied Renaissance polyphony, music involving two or more equally prominent melodies, otherwise known as counterpoint. He began to blend this contrapuntal texture with folk-inspired passages, an emphasis on rhythm, and progressive tonality to create his own modern style. Progressive tonality is a composition practice in which the beginning and ending of a piece are in different keys, in other words, centered on different home notes. This presents a break from the classical tradition of reusing the starting home note at the conclusion of a piece. Rather than creating a sense of return and completion, progressive tonality creates a feeling of change and development, hence the name. In his later work, Nielsen also employed an aesthetic approach called objectivering, in which each instrument seeks to assert its own individual intentions. Although he worked during the area of auto recordings, Nielsen made no recordings of his own work because he did not believe in the medium.
Nielsen's Violin Concertos, the second piece you will hear this evening, dates from 1911 towards the end of its earlier neoclassical period. As you listen, you will notice the emphasis on melody, the sequence and progression of individual notes. The classical concerto is a piece for a solo instrument accompanied by an orchestra in three movements, typically alternating in tempo or speed, fast, slow, fast. However, the violin concerto does not quite fit this description. It in fact has only two movements, each starting with a slow section and ending with a fast one. But this alternation gives the illusion of the traditional three-movement structure of the classical concerto. The first movement, the preludium, is calm, consisting of a simple melody or tune for the orchestra and providing an opportunity for violin virtuosity at a faster speed. The opening to the second movement, the poco adagio, is long and slow, but the ending is frisky and quick. In this excerpt from the change in tempo from fast to slow, while the slow section is technically a continuation of the same movement, it is reminiscent of the slow middle movement of a classical concerto. On the other hand, Nielsen's Flute Concerto, the first piece on the program, was composed during his late, modern period. Written in 1926, it was intended to be one of a set of five Nielsen was writing for the Copenhagen Wind Quintet. He had so much enjoyed writing a quintet for the group in the past, Nielsen vowed to write a concerto specifically for each member to best exhibit their personal styles and strengths. However, he managed to complete only two, the other being his clarinet concerto of 1928, before his death. In the flute concerto, Nielsen moved entirely away from the three-movement structure, writing it in two movements without the quick-slow-quick quick alternation. The piece also employs the progressive tonality characteristic of his later work, frequently changing key. While maintaining the dialogue between the solo instrument, the flute, and the orchestra, which is characteristic of a concerto, notice that in the first movement another conversation between the clarinet and the bassoon occurs, as well as an interruption by the bass trombone. The second movement is extremely atypical of a classical concerto, in what Nielsen himself referred to as a little nastiness in some notes cast forth by the orchestra, which quickly relaxes again when the solo flute enters and does so with childish innocence. You see what he means here in this excerpt from the second movement of the flute concerto. The final piece on tonight's program is Tchaikovsky's Second Symphony, also known as The Little Russian. Tchaikovsky, known for his symphonies, concertos, operas, ballets, and chamber music, was the first Russian composer to leave a lasting international impression. He was also the first Russian to have a career as a full-time professional composer. At the time of his birth, there was little opportunity to make a living in music in Russia, and Tchaikovsky was in fact initially trained as a civil servant. Unlike Nielsen, Tchaikovsky achieved international popular acclaim in his lifetime, although critics were initially mixed. He was honored by the Russian Tsar Alexander III, and his work was performed at the inaugural concert of Carnegie Hall in New York City in 1891. Tchaikovsky's style was a unique blend of traditional Russian art music and Western classicism. Tchaikovsky's favorite composer was Mozart, but Western European classical traditions were at odds with fierce Russian nationalism, and it took many years for Tchaikovsky to reconcile the two into an independent, although still definitively Russian, style. Like classical composers such as Mozart, and unlike Romantic composers such as Brahms, Tchaikovsky was concerned with the aesthetic impact of his music, in other words, how listeners would respond to the emotional build-ups and releases. 
Tchaikovsky was also influenced by a circle of St. Petersburg romantic nationalist composers known as the Five, who drew from traditional Russian folk music. However, Tchaikovsky's symphonies typically met Western expectations in integrated structure, coherence, and opulence. His 1872 Second Symphony was the exception to this rule. It earned the favor of the five through its extensive use of Ukrainian folk songs, which formed the basis for three of the four movements. The nickname Little Russian comes from these folk songs, as Ukraine was then known as Little Russia. While wildly popular with his contemporaries, Tchaikovsky disliked the work, extensively rewriting and westernizing it between 1879 and 1880, and destroying the original version, although it has since been reconstructed by historians. Tchaikovsky was never to use folk songs so prevalently again. Although the original is occasionally performed, most performances, including tonight's, are of his revised, preferred version. The first movement has two themes, or subjects, one of which is a Ukrainian variation of Down by Mother Volga, which opens the work. Uncharacteristically for a symphony, the folk song closes the movement, but is never again repeated in its entirety. Notice in the middle or development stage of the movement that both themes are played at once. The second movement derives from Bridal March Tchaikovsky wrote for an unpublished opera, blended with quotations from the folk song Spin, O My Spinner. The lively third movement does not quote a folk song, but the style of the entire movement is characteristic of one. It is in what is called decapo form, consisting of a first section, a second section, and a repetition of the first section with embellishments. The elaborate final movement opens with an orchestral fanfare and has as a theme the folk song The Crane, repeated with variations and contrasted with the second lyrical melody. You can hear this use of both the bridal march and the folk song in the following excerpt from the second movement. concludes tonight's pre-concert lecture. Please enjoy Nielsen's Flute and Violin Concertos and Tchaikovsky's Second Symphony, and remember to silence your cell phone and all other electronic devices. Thank you, and enjoy the performance.